Hey, welcome back to this channel guys in today's video we are going to take a look at how to create this interlaced text effect inside GIMP so to get started let's create a new file go to file new and I'm going to set the width to 1280 by 720 and click on ok now um, I'm going to set the background to black so as you can see right now the color of the foreground and the background is set to white so I want to quickly switch it to the default which is black and white so you can just click on this little icon over here and we'll switch to black and white now to quickly fill it in with the foreground color you can hold the control key and the comma key on the keyboard to fill it fill in the canvas with the foreground color if you want to fill the canvas with the background color you can hold the control and the beaded key on the keyboard to do that I want this to be black so I'm going to control C this and now I'm going to select the text tool or you can press T key on your keyboard to select it uh, once you select your text uh, choose your font I'm going to use this font right over here and I'm going to decrease its size as well so maybe around 400 and I'm going to set its color to white and click on OK then you can, then you can just click on the canvas and just type in your text so after you type in your text, control A and then you can just move it in the center or wherever you want it to be. So once you are done with that, then you can create another text layer. So I'm going to use the text tool again and I'm going to change the font to, I'm going to use a script font for this. So uh, there's a font, Nikenly, um, so I can use that. I'll provide the links of these fonts in the description so you can download them and use them if you want to use the same fonts. Um, but once you have that I'm going to change its size to 500 and change its color to a different color and click on OK and then I'm going to click outside this box to create a new text layer and I'm going to type in my text so uh, I'll just type in day just like in the example and then with the move tool I can just you know position this properly alright so once you have set up your text then what you can do is uh, you can create a new layer in the bottom right corner uh, you can see the new layer option just click on that to create a new layer and I'm going to call this gradient and I'm going to set the default values here make sure the fill width is set to transparency and click on OK then I'm going to use the ellipse select tool and I'm going to create an ellipse and now I'm going to hold the shift key and to create a perfect ellipse then we can use the gradient tool and we'll just click on that and set the opacity to 100 and the color make sure you set this to foreground to background rgb so maybe we can set this to default back to default black and white and uh, now we can hold the control key on the keyboard and just create a straight line like this all right so once you do that then you can click on this point the one at the bottom and right now the color is set to black we can change it to a different color okay, so uh, what I did was just uh, at the top as I chose a lighter color and at the bottom the bottom stop I have like a darker shade of color of, the, of that same color so after you are done with this you can hit enter on a keyboard to confirm the gradient and then I'm going to go to edit and click on copy and now on the right side you can see you have the clipboard on the brushes all your brushes on the right side you can see that we have the this gradient as a brush over here which we can use later on um, so go to select and click on none and I'm going to hide the gradient layer let's create a new layer and we'll call this stroke click on ok and now we can use the paint brush tool make sure the opacity is set to 100 and from the brushes we are going to S select the the brush that we just created the gradient so you can just click on that and once you do that then you just have to uh, you have all these uh, settings so I'm going to maybe decrease the size a bit and I'm going to leave the aspect ratio and angle to the default values and maybe make sure the spacing is set to 1 and hardness to 100 force 200 and come down and you have the option of smooth stroke enable that and set the quality to maximum and weight to maximum once you do that then you can use on the canvas you can just draw in just like that 
but as you can see we have these some black color in our gradient as well which we don't need so there's a way to fix this either you can just increase the size of your brush and draw it and that will you know try and get rid of get rid of the black for you uh, or you can just uh, load down the force amount and you know resize it and you can just you know draw this again so now it's gonna work as it's expected to and now you can just you know either use your mouse the hand to you know draw your text or alternatively what you can do is you can use the path tool you can press p key on your keyboard to get it and i'm going to trace uh, the path over this text so i can just uh, create some points and create a path on this text so you can just roughly create this path and once you do create it I'm going to create I'm going to create this really quick so you just take your time with this um, and once you create this uh, path and you can just you know uh, drag these lines to create curves um, just like that and once you do that you can notice that all these points the circle you have a handle with it so what you can do is you can hold the shift key on the keyboard and you just select uh, that handle and you can just lock these two handles together to create a more controlled curve and you can do the same thing with all these points hold the shift key on the handle and just lock the curve and create your smooth curve <clears throat> I'm going to probably fast forward this portion uh, so I'll see you when I finish creating all this Alright, so once you have your, once you're done creating your path, and you can click on stroke path, and you, this box will appear where you have to choose the second option, which is stroke with a paint brush, with a paint tool. And from the paint tool, we need to select the paint brush. Click on emulate brush dynamics and click on stroke. So there you can see you have your stroke, uh, you have this brush on top of the path. So that is exactly what we want. Um, if you want to, you know change the the look of the path if you want to maybe decrease the size of the brush you can hit ctrl z go back to paintbrush and you can decrease the size amount to maybe around uh, 45 you can go back to uh, maybe uh, the bezier the path tool but we still don't have the path over here so we can find it over here on the right side you have the layers channels and paths so we go to paths we have the path over here right click on it and click on stroke path and click on stroke all right so that's how you can create this a stroke on top of your design so uh, this i just created really quick so you just you know should you know put some extra effort into creating your path so so that your designs will look uh, much better anyway so now we'll just create the interlaced effect and to create that uh, it's actually quite simple we are going to right click on the text which is at the bottom the one that says good right click on it and click on I'll add I'll not add click on alpha to selection so it's create, going to create a selection around your text then I'm going to select the stroke layer click on it and I'm going to right click on it and click on add layer mask select white full opacity and click on add and make sure that your color is set to default the background and the foreground color is set to the default color so now we can use the paint brush tool and i'm going to use a different brush for this so maybe we'll use this one right over here and maybe just increase the size a bit I'm going to decrease the spacing and the force i'm going to set this to 100 and i don't want the smooth stroke so we'll turn that off and now you can just 
brush it in and what will do, what this will do is like erase the all the parts that are uh, inside or overlapping the text and if you want some part like we removed uh, this text so we can if you want to bring some part back you can just you know switch the color to white and paint it again and you can just bring it back I just have to show you creativity over here which part you want to reveal and which part to hide so maybe I'll just remove this bit let's switch it to black to you know now that's this is looking like it's underneath the first letter and we will do the same thing with other text or the other parts as well so maybe we'll just find one maybe like this over here you just zoom in and just you know take some time with this Clean it up properly and yeah, so uh, maybe we'll just do something over here. Yep, and uh, maybe over here as well so you see what I'm trying to do right it's how you can create this overlapped effect so once you do that then you can just go to select and select none and I'm also going to hide the text layer which is in the red color so I'm going to hide it as well and what I also like to do is so I'm going to create a new layer under the stroke layer so I'm going to select the gradient layer and create a new layer which is going to create a layer on top of it I'm going to call this shadow and click on OK. And then I'm going to use the paint brush tool and select the select this brush, the soft brush. And I'm going to increase its size like that. Load down the force. Yeah, something like that. And uh, just, just trying to apply a nice drop shadow under our text. So maybe something like this and this over here now what you can do is then load down its opacity so um, that just adds a bit more depth in our design uh, we all we can also do is select the stroke uh, the image itself not the not the layer mask just select the image click on it and then we can use this tool that says dodge burn tool and we can like uh, you know apply some just click on it and you can see that it darkens the color a bit so like uh, this also adds a bit more depth in our design so maybe we should you know just uh, just figure out where we want to apply this dodge and burn maybe over here and yeah so so that's that's it that's how you can create this overlapped design inside game um, thank you for watching this video i hope it was helpful if you want to see more game tutorials do consider liking the video and also subscribing to the channel and uh, thank you for watching again i'll see you guys in the next one